I gotta go live in the east wing because I can't be living in the main part. During my early 20s, that's Dave's early 20s who wrote today's script, not mine. Uh, format here if you're new. Dave writes it, I read it, let's go. I helped a good friend of mine move into a new house, being considerably fitter back then and poor enough that I would still work in exchange for pizza and beer. This was a fairly regular occurrence. However, after what we discovered in this guy's new loft, I stopped helping people move house and started paying for my own supplies. <laughs> Holy shit, what did you find? In it's like, yeah, we went up there, it was full of dead bodies, just skulls. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't, but it's probably going to be grim. Uh, Bill, as we shall refer to him, had among other things quite a large collection of various fossils that he had collected during his ten years living on the Isle of Wight, and until he had come up with a decent way to display these, he decided to store them in the loft. Wait, what's so- wait, 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 what? What's so weird about this? It's just a bunch of fossils. After about 10 minutes of carrying these exceptionally heavy boxes up the ladder and stacking them inside the hatchway, I became aware that Bill had stopped collecting them and instead was rummaging around in the piles of crap he had inherited along with his new house. Behind one of these piles, he came across six or seven small digital safes just stacked on top of each other along the back wall. Oh, I like this. There's something extremely compelling about safes, like an unlocked safe. And you know, you see those YouTube videos, or isn't there that famous thing where it's like, opening Al Capone's safe, and they open it, and there's never anything interesting inside. It's never exciting, because, you know, people don't lose the keys to exciting safes. And if they do, they have them cracked, so they can get at whatever exciting thing is inside. Like, I have a safe here, and it's got some valuable shit inside. Well, let's get looting. I shouldn't really be saying this, should I? <laughs> I don't have a safe. <laughs> what safe? Obviously, curious to exactly what these contained, we abandoned the fossils and took a few of them downstairs in order to investigate. The batteries that powered the locking mechanisms had long since run out, but with the help of lockpicks that I kept in my toolbox, we were eventually able to get one of them open. You are using a Master Lock Model 176. You can open it using a Master Lock Model 176. Inside, what is going on? What is in these safes? Inside, wrapped in a blanket, there was a hand. No, I'm just kidding. There wasn't a hand. Why are you the way that you are? There was a small fluffy teddy bear. This is, I don't know what's more creepy, whether there'd be a human hand in there or just a weird ass teddy bear. You got just like a stack of safes and they've all got like... They feel like, what did this person do? Did they murder children and then keep their teddy bears locked in safes as like mementos? I mean, I'm sure not, and I've probably just made too many episodes of The Casual Criminalist, but goddamn. Although this in and of itself isn't particularly creepy, I mean, it's odd, but not creepy. I don't know, they're pretty creepy. This particular teddy bear had undergone a few aftermarket modifications. Not only had the head been removed from the body, but some sort of improvised miniature stake had been driven through the place where, had it been real, the heart would have been. Does this person believe in, is it voodoo? Like, where you make a little model of someone and then you, like, stick pins in them to hurt them? I mean, it's uh, obviously bullshit, but someone could believe in this and then they lock it in a safe as part of the, like, weird ritual. People are weird. You always gotta remember, people are weird. After opening two more of these boxes and discovering almost exactly the same thing, we got exceptionally creeped out and threw the rest in a skip down the road. I don't see Bill that often anymore, but whenever I do, the subject of just what the f had been going on in that house before he moved in never fails to come up. In fact, it was a chance encounter with Bill and the subsequent resurfacing of this story that gave me the idea for this script. So sit back, try to relax, and we'll take a look at some of the most bizarre things people have found when they moved into new houses. I think it's some weird voodoo shit. Like, Someone thinks that they can just cast spells on people or some bullshit like that. Right? Cat finds treasure. You know how Simon hates dogs and wants to organize some sort of worldwide. I don't! This follows me around the internet like the f***ing plague. Like, I don't want a dog genocide. I just said I would rather commit a dog genocide than a human genocide. That's what I said. That doesn't mean I want a dog genocide. Leave me alone! And he's already trending. Well, that's pretty much how I feel about cats. There are a few notable exceptions, such as the cat I had as a child who spent so much time around German shepherds that he thought he was one, but by and large, cats can f Cats are awesome, Dave. You shut up. 
I don't feel that bad about this. Cats hate me as well. To the point where, about three or four times a year, I'll be attacked by random cats in the street. Well, maybe that says something about you, Dave. You know that TV show Dexter, where there's always dogs barking at him because he's a serial killer or some shit like that? Maybe that's you with cats. Maybe you're a serial killer, Dave. Have you considered that, Dave? Have you? Maybe that's why cats hate you, Dave. Maybe you should stop killing people. That being said, had I been the owner, or more accurately, owned by this cat, we might have been able to be friends. <laughs> what is that sentence? That being said, had I been the owner, or more accurately, owned by this cat. Oh, okay, because cats own people. Okay, okay, I get it. I'm sorry, I just ruined the joke. <laughs> it's complicated to read. I'm sorry, Dave. It's your punishment for killing so many people. As the story goes, one Reddit user had been living in his or her current house for about three years before deciding to purchase a kitten. This kitten, like all other kittens, was a massive pain in the ass, constantly getting into places she shouldn't be and generally making everyone's life miserable. What the f***? I've, I've had, I had two cats when I was a kid, and they were lovely. One day, she got into the cupboard under the stairs, went through a small hole into the drywall, and refused to come out. Now, had this been up to me, I'd have boarded up the hole and just waited for the smell to go, Dave, you savage. Oh, that smell is terrible though i remember like years ago yesterday my parents like i you'd go to the house and they'd be like what's that smell and they'd be like there's a dead something somewhere and i'd be like it's terrible and they were like we know we live here and it's like some rat or mouse or whatever had died underneath their like floorboards somewhere and they just couldn't find it and it smelled horrible until the smell went away. <laughs> until it became skeletized. <laughs> this cat owner, presumably because they were doing renovation work anyway, ripped out the drywall and found the cat sitting on some cardboard boxes. According to the thread, I pulled them out, and inside ended up being around $10,000 of silver and old coins that it seemed were put there after the 90s and forgotten about. Awesome. That is a find. Although the hero of this story, by which I mean the person who was forced to damage the house to retrieve a cat, not the cat itself, seems to be content to run with this rather innocent explanation. I can't help but think that there may be a more sinister aspect to it, or at the very least that this hoard may have been less than illeg legally obtained. Why? People like buy things like silver or gold and they hide them places. Because they're like, well, I don't trust it in a, you know, if you put the gold in a safe, that's where everyone's going to break into to find your gold. But if you hide it behind the drywall, no one's going to find it. I don't think it necessarily has anything to do with the illegality. I just think someone forgot about their, like, secret stash of silver, or they had a secret stash of silver and they died, and no one knew where they kept their secret stash of silver. Granted, I'm not sure what I would do with $10,000 worth of silver if I had it, but I really don't think I would go so far as to build it into my house. Also, I, I, me and Dave are just built different then, because I'm like, that's exactly what I'd do. <laughs> that's exactly where I'd keep my silver. Also, silver's like, you have, it's not that expensive. $10,000 of silver is not like $10,000 of gold. Like $10,000 of gold is probably like this big. <laughs> $10,000 of silver? That's pretty f off big. Also, I'm absolutely sure I would have remembered it when I moved out. Forgotten pet. Imagine, if you will, that you finally moved into your dream house, constantly working, never spending any money you didn't need to, and avoiding any kind of so socializing has now finally paid off. <laughs> I know Dave's joking, but it is kind of the sad reality that we live in. Houses are f***ing expensive. The price of houses is just so much higher than people's incomes. Like, it used to be like, oh, yeah, no, a house is, like, reasonably affordable. You could see, like, oh, yeah, you get a mortgage. It works out for that many years. And now it's just like, how the f*** do people ever pay this off? It's just houses are so expensive. Now you can come back on your ass, relax in your own home, and have friends over for dinner parties. This is the good bit. The bit before you realize that living like a hermit for the last 20 years mean you don't have any friends to invite over for dinner parties. I don't know. The biggest thing for, like, me is, like, why I... I'm, like, I see my friends way f less than I used to. It's got nothing to do with not having a social life to buy a house. It's just like, oh, no, I had kids. And now it's like, I like to go to bed at nine because they wake up early. I like to spend time with them instead. It's like... I don't know, I feel like that, but that's a more positive thing. Because it's like, why are you seeing your friends less? It's like, I don't know, you're family now. But, like, yeah, just not going out so you can, like, eat less avocado toast, so you can save up to buy a house that you can't afford. That seems, like, depressing. Hold on. What? What if we pay you in... Avocado toast.
Life is, in short, good. One day, as you're relaxing in your luxuriously appointed lounge, you think you hear an unusual noise upstairs. Curious, you decide to investigate, but after searching the entire house, you find nothing unusual. Chiding yourself for your overactive imagination, you return to the business of the day. Later that night, as you lie alone in bed, you hear the sound again. A sort of sliding dragging sound. Once more, you leap from your bed and search the entire house, only to come out empty-handed. If I heard that sound in my bed at night, if I was alone at home, I'd just pull the duvet up over my head and be like, it's not real. <laughs> just go back to sleep and hope that it's nothing. And then you just wake up murdered. How the hell do you wake up dead? Or, <laughs> or your house has been completely emptied. And you're like, Fuck, I should have listened. I should have got up and checked that. You tell yourself that the house is old, and old houses make weird noises. You somehow manage to fall asleep. Unfortunately for you, this becomes a regular occurrence, and despite getting friends and family members to come around and help you search, you can't find anything. I mean, how big does your house need to be if you've got friends and family members coming around to help you search? Like, I feel you could just search as you just be like, okay, it's not here. It's not here. Is it? Done. Boom. Easy. It's not like, oh yeah, dad, come around. I need you to help me search the east wing. <laughs> That motherfucker did not eat a lot of avocado toast. That is, of course, until you have some plumbing work done. Now, the original storyteller didn't mention what kind of plumbing work this was. <laughs> like, there's different kinds of plumbing work? <laughs> I know there obviously are, but I'm like, I don't know. Dave, I guess the plumbing work involves some sort of plumbing. <laughs> People are like, Simon, you're f***ing out of touch, bro. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know shit about plumbing. <laughs> But they say that it was necessitated by having several upstairs floorboards taken up and that they remained up overnight. Imagine how much damage you might do to your underwear if, as you head up to bed that night, a seven-foot-long python lowered itself over the banisters right in front of your face. No f***ing way. There was a python moving around in, like, the crawl... Like, not the crawl space, but the, like, under the floorboards in the house, like, eating all the mice and sh and just getting f***ing massive. I would sell that house and I would I would move. Or I'd like be like, yeah, I gotta go live in the East Wing because I can't be living in the main parts. Like where there's the giant python. F As you may imagine, the new homeowner was, shall we say, less than pleased and quickly contacted the previous owner to voice this displeasure. As it transpired, the previous tenant did own the snake, but it went missing about two months before they moved out and they'd assumed that it had left the premises. <laughs> what the f you up to? Somehow it actually found its way under the floorboards, and that was the noise that had been heard. Given that, according to a snake-owning friend of mine, pythons can go for between 9 and 12 months without eating. Holy sh**, really? Two or three months would have not been a problem at all. For anybody who is interested, the snake was eventually reunited with its previous owner. If that was me, I'd be like, what snake? <laughs> They'd be like, because <laughs> I'm fine. Did you have a giant snake? Be like, I'd be like, in my mind, oh my god, Jeffrey's eaten someone. <laughs> Jeffrey, no! Satanic symbols. Thanks to Twitter user Clatow821 for putting me onto this one. Full disclosure, the information for this entry was taken from an article in the Daily Mirror, so get out your salt shakers. Yeah, Daily Mirror is not super reputable. Adam Powers, much like everybody else in this story, had just bought a new house. Upon removing the old carpet in his lounge, he discovered a massive pentagram that had been carved into the floorboards. Immediately, I'm like, uh, I guess he lived in this house last edgy teenager. Just in case you're not familiar with this piece of iconography, the mirror helpfully provided this information. The symbol has been adopted by various religious movements, including but not limited to the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints, Wicca, and Satanism. Really? Isn't Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is that the Jehovah's Witnesses? No. Is that the same thing? They use the, the, uh, what the f*** is it called? Pentagram? Was it called a pentagram? F go back, go back. This is a pentagram. Pentagram? Yeah, pentagram. They're like the 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 star that you can draw with one. How the f do you draw that? Just the star with one line. Yeah, like that. There you go. Boom. Now, if it had been my house, I would have left it there and made it the centerpiece of the entire room. That's because Dave is an edgy teenager. Sadly, Adam is boring, and after taking photographs of the image and presumably sending them to the newspaper, he set about sanding the floor back to its former glory. That's what I would do. I'd be like, lift up the carpet, got nice floorboards under there, sand that shit down, varnish it up, be real nice, put a carpet down, I love a good wooden floor. This is a shame, really, as one person who commented on the article pointed out if he had just sacrificed a goat on top of it, then when it came to moving in all of his heavy furniture, it might have just easily floated there in place as if by magic. <laughs> mm. Hilarious. Some people just have no sense of adventure. Wait, that's it? <laughs> that's the whole entry, Dave? We're really plumbing the depths of content, aren't we? When it's like, yeah, yeah, dude moved into a house, there's a pentagram carved into the floor. It was in the Daily Mail. Mirror, so you don't even know if it's true. And then it ends, and that's it. <laughs> it was so weak. <laughs> the previous tenant. 
Buying a house at all. Oh, no way. Someone moved into a house and there's someone still living in the house? They just moved, like, into the attic or something? Buying a house at auction can be a great way to save money. Unfortunately, because of the way these auctions are often conducted, the person who purchases the property may not have had a chance to look around inside and is often going on photographs provided by the auction house. Jesus Christ, that is bold. Yeah, just buying a house sight unseen. I won't buy a car sight unseen, let alone a f house. That being said, you'd think that representatives from the auction house would at least have gone over and had a good look around before the home went under the hammer. In the case of a property in District Heights, Maryland, this does not appear to have been the case. According to NBC, the new owner of a District Heights, Maryland home found the body of the previous resident inside. Oh, what the f***? <laughs> Wait. Uh, Wait, what? How is the house on the market without someone going around there to clear out the f body, bro? And how smelly is that body going to be? It's going to be f ripe, dude. Although this was undoubtedly distressing, the person for whom I feel most sympathy is the deceased. According to one of her neighbors who had known her since childhood, she suffered from severe mental disabilities. As we grew up into adults, she never grew up, so she needed help with things and didn't process things as well as an adult would, even though she was an adult. Up until about a year before she died, she'd been cared for by her elderly grandmother, and after she passed away, neighbors would regularly check in on her to make sure that she was doing okay. However, about three months before the house was sold, neighbors stopped seeing her out and about and assumed that she had moved in with another family member. Bro, someone should check on her. Someone should be. I'll just call the police and be like, yo, I need one of those wellness checks. Go around and make sure that she's not popped it. Mm -hmm. Please. <laughs> I don't know where she is. Sadly, this was not the case. It appears that probably because there was nobody around to help her organize such things, none of the bills had been paid and the utilities were eventually cut off. According to the same neighbor, I know they cut utilities. I know there's no power in there. I'm not sure if there was water in there, but I'm pretty sure if they cut the electricity, they cut the heat too. Wait, did this person freeze to death in their own house? That's up, bro. I was unable to find the results of the autopsy online, but there are only really two possibilities. Firstly, she had some sort of accident which resulted in her death, or secondly, she slowly starved and froze to death, anxiously waiting for help that never came. When you look at it like that, the inconvenience of having to have a dead body removed from your new property doesn't really seem that bad. Nah, but it is a hassle. <laughs> I'll be like, for fuck's sake. Why are you the way that you are? I'll be like, and I didn't even get a discount. I hate so much about the things that you choose to be i feel like if there was a if people knew there was a dead body in there i'd get a discount the previous tenant part two. Oh no this is going to be the one where someone lives in the attic isn't it <laughs> creepy dude. Personally, I think this last entry is the creepiest. There are several reasons for this. Firstly, I vaguely know some of the people involved and I'm 100% convinced it's true. Secondly, I'm currently alone in my big old house while my wife and child visit the Eden Project. My only company is my German Shepherd who, in spite of all my efforts to persuade her otherwise, insists on barking at nothing at all. Well, maybe she is barking at something, Dave. <laughs> Maybe she is. But is she barking at nothing at all? Anyway, here's the story. About 15 years ago, some of the friends of my mother, who I believe were called Wendy and Tim, decided that they'd had enough of living in the perpetual drizzle that is Great Yarmouth and packed up and moved to Australia. What is Australia's most popular wine? Uh, that they're constantly confused with New Zealanders. Correct. That's a move and a half. I think there might be a little more to this story now that I think of it, and I shall have to ask my mother one day. From what I remember, the decision was made very quickly, and not only did they leave the country before completing the sale of the house, they also did not have a place to move to. A Tim and Wendy on the run from the law. <laughs> I had to flee. After spending some time with friends, they eventually did secure a property of their own and moved in. On the day that everything was finalized, the previous owner asked if he might come over and look at his childhood home one more time. Having no particular objections to this, Tim and Wendy welcomed him into their new home and sat and listened to him tell stories about the place and just generally reminisce about the past. As he was leaving, the couple decided to take their two children out for dinner, and as they drove away, they noticed that the previous owner was still standing in the garden, staring up at the house. Uh, it's like this dude's creepy. This is super creepy. At the time, they didn't think too much of this. I mean, anybody who has seen the latest episode of Bluey can tell you how hard it is to move house. For the first couple of weeks, everything seemed to be absolutely fine. When the family went away to visit a friend for the weekend, they came back to find a few things out of place. Dude, that's weird. They were sure that they had more bread and milk than they did. Tim's laptop appeared to have been moved, and there was water in the shower tray as if somebody had recently used it. Convincing themselves there were logical explanations for all of these things, yep, 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 the logical explanation is there has been a dude living in your house. 
They carried on living their lives as best they could. It wasn't until about four months after they moved in when Tim decided that it was finally time to move some of the boxes that they had shipped over out of the basement that he made a rather peculiar discovery. In a small room at the back of the basement space, he found the previous tenant asleep in a pile of blankets. <laughs> what is this guy up to? Apparently, his plans had been interrupted when the house he was going to move into fell through, and he decided to hide out downstairs, only coming up to, see, to use the facilities when everyone was out or asleep. The bizarre thing about this story is that after everyone had calmed down, they actually let him stay for a further six weeks until he got himself sorted out. What? If this happened to me, I'd call the police. <laughs> I guess I'm just a douchebag, but like, Jesus Christ. Just, no, no! no! You just sold a house. Use some of that money to go stay in a f***ing Airbnb. Come on. Personally, that guy would have been out of my house and straight to jail before he'd finished telling the story. You're goddamn right, Dave. Maybe they just do things different in Australia. Maybe they're just more friendly. Which recurring event wreaks havoc and devastation throughout Australia each and every year? Australia Day. Correct. I found quite a few versions of this story in various Reddit threads on, on creepypasta videos, but I decided to include this one because, as I said, I'm almost completely sure that it's true. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Before I go, I'd like to share with you the message that Danny sent me after reading my introduction. That's exactly the kind of thing I leave behind when I'm moving house, just to freak out the next few tenants. Oh no, the 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 the, the. <laughs> You just buy a bunch of safes and put weird, like, mutilated fiery toys in there? But you never get to enjoy the 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 the, the the results of your joke also when doing a spot of interior decorating always scroll the world's help us in red crayon beneath the new wallpaper whether or not you choose to take up this advice is up to you however i should definitely consider it should i ever need to relocate simon this last bit's just for you although i have no objections to you reading it out loud if you think it fits <laughs> Let's see where this goes. During my research, I came across a Reddit post on this topic, which made me really laugh. Unfortunately, there was not enough information to include an entry in this script, but I thought it might give you a chance to chuckle, so I've included it below. These ass I bought a house from stuck a little skeleton figurine dressed up in a little monk's robe behind the exhaust vent in the furnace closet. Just about myself when I opened up that door, and there was this tiny skeletal hand poking out. I thought it was a dead baby. <laughs> I like that. I will do that. <laughs> Beautiful. I'll be like, in my mind, oh my god, Jeffrey's eaten someone. <laughs> Jeffrey, no!